Thank you, and uh, thanks for staying with us here all day. And um, I want to get very precise about defining cells, cell types, subtypes, and the proteins that are in those cells and on the surface of those cells. So it's going to be a protein-based mapping exercise that I'll bring you through in the next uh, 20 minutes or so. And uh, that's quite different than genomic methods, as you'll note right off the bat. So we're uh, by water, actually, in the Midwest. We sometimes refer ourselves as the third coast, <laughs> or uh, that's Lake Michigan there. And uh, this is the team we've assembled to execute this project. And it's a dream team, in my view. We have an expert in cell surface capture, so the proteins on surface of cells. There's great new methods to do that, and that's Rebecca Gundry. We have a great biostatistician in Rich LeDuc, an expert in flow cytometry, and then uh, our team, all four of us here at Northwestern. And I like the bottom line up front, and uh, some people call that the bluff approach. But, you know, we're, we're busy people, so let me just lay out what I'm going to lay out. And so it's a protein-based map. And so if you're one of those who believes that proteins are highly connected to phenotype or highly defining of cell type, subtype and cell type switching, then that's a very new kind of measurement approach. And there's spin-offs of doing that. If you get a list of a few hundred cell surface proteins, turns out a lot of people are interested in that list for diagnostics, um, even therapeutic targets, etc. So there's a lot of spin-offs of that to define, sort, and image in situ uh, cell types. So there's one immediate gain. The other uh, third bullet here is to enhance a move in mass spectrometry-based proteomics toward top-down proteomics. And I'm um, at the center of this small but detectable storm and a revolution in mass spectrometry-based proteomics from bottom-up to top-down methods. And uh, that kind of approach of cataloging protein molecules uh, in a way that defines their primary structures exactly, uh, this is a way to define a a definitive list of protein molecules uh, in B cells. And so we're going after B cells uh, in this. And so let's take a look at the history of the, of the map. So this is a map of a process. This is not like a spatial tissue map or in space, right? This is in our bodies uh, from stem cells. Circa 1983, okay, B cells producing antibodies, protecting us from infection, et cetera. And so through the decades, this map has been uh, added to, accentuated through all sorts of mostly cell surface proteins, discovered ad hoc. There's not been a discovery mode kind of project to map this out and actually put quantitative distances and the relationships between these cells. And yes, even on the heels of the last talk, try to map out the lineage, as complicated as that might be, and, and, and do this in discovery mode. So that's, that's what we're attempting to do. And uh, we're going to uh, go after proteins. And, and so we need all the metrics of a map, okay, of a spatial map, right? You need, what do you need? You need uh, features, locations, uh, whether that be Seattle or Chicago. Um, the distances between those features on the map or cell types. And a measure of the resolution of the map. Okay. And at the very end, you also want a way to navigate the map, right? So the zip codes or the barcodes are the way to do that. And so that's where we'll, we'll end. And this is our progress. I'm calling it cellular cartography. It's not exactly like Christopher Columbus. Uh, but it's, it is channeling uh, uh, June's talk from this morning where he was talking about Tico Brahe and just defining good measurements as a basis, a uh, place to start and then um, how that worked out in cosmology. And I'm very much of that school. I really enjoyed the beginnings of his lecture. I violently agree with that view that biology should uh, embrace generating uh, discovery type licks. Precision medicine is like precision cosmology, um, but we need a Hubble of sorts for proteins. And this has not been the subject of, of a big science project or a moonshot. But let's, at least on B cells, look at three types of proteins. So we're going to look at cell surface proteins, histones in the nucleus, and then whole protein molecules uh, from whole cell extracts. 
And so we're gonna, the world knows something about subtypes, B cell subtypes. So we're going to start from a, a known subtype, uh, collect a, a pool, and then apply this cell surface proteomics technology um, <clears throat> and, and discover what in that pool, what markers there are in an unbiased, largely unbiased approach, and uh, then apply these augment, uh, these, these additional protein level uh, detection technologies to track how the nucleus is changing, the chromatin, through differentiation. That's the histone assay that I'll describe. And then these uh, whole protein molecules, you know, you get the whole structure, the modifications, uh, polymorphisms, exons, and splicing. You get the entire primary structure in this approach called top-down. And so we believe that will, that will help us generate a higher resolution map. And so the last part of this cycle is to map. And uh, so those are the four steps. And we're just going to go around and around this like a racetrack and as long as, as many times as we can in the next two and a half years. All right? And as we go around and around this racetrack, the map should become higher and higher resolution. And these are protein molecules. And I'll explain each assay in, in the subsequent few minutes. But uh, it should yield uh, distances. And then I'll address how to read out each subtype in this map uh, at the end. So the first part of this is cell surface capture. So if you're not familiar with this, you, there's ways now to take 10 to the 7 cells. So that's 10 million cells. OK, this is not single cell uh, genomics. But uh, that's where current technology uh, is starting. And that's relatively straightforward for experts like, like Rebecca Gundry and now us. Um, and we can, we can grab pro, uh, cell surface proteins, create an atlas of what will be three to 400 N-glycosylated cell surface proteins, and then do some informatics. And just to show you proof of idea or proof of concept, this is data from Rebecca's lab where she's monitoring stem cells over 100 days, uh, differentiating into cardiomyocytes. And she doesn't want just any cardiomyocyte beaten in a dish, right? She wants left ventricle specific markers of that type of cells. If we're going to regrow hearts, we need to be very precise about cell types. And she's monitoring, here's four proteins. You know, this one's my favorite, uh, biphasic, right? Over 100 days, it comes in, blinks off, and comes back. And then others are early or late. And uh, so if you now imagine a, a three to 400 of these types, can you use that to generate quantitative distances using the same scaffold as evolutionary biology and phylogen phyl phylogeny to generate a similar kind of map? And so in a little more detail, cell surface capture, these are glycans on the surface. We go after N glycans. We tag them with some specific chemistry uh, and then put them in a blender and then uh, pull out the glycopeptides now. So this is not top down. This is just glycopeptides after uh, trypsin digestion or digestion with a protease. And then we selectively grab those and we run out the list. And there's all sorts of checks of doing this. And so in the few months we've been at this, we've got three B cell cancer lines. So you notice we're starting with cancer lines. And uh, we've got over 300 glycoproteins identified. And there's checks you can put on this. You can see, am I specifically getting glycopeptides? And uh, there's checks for known glycosylation sites, et cetera. So we've already got a 5x increase of the known, and, and uh, people will recognize these uh, cluster differentiation markers. These are the known assays that people use for cell surface proteins. And you saw hints of that in Jeremy's talk earlier. But we've picked up you know, the known things that we should, but now we've got all these others that could help define uh, the cells in these mixtures. So we've been able to join, uh, excuse me, this is the two uh, shining faces of uh, the young scientists that are leading this effort in cell surface proteomics. This is Rebecca and Bernd Volscheid, who's in, at the ETH. And so they have a cell surface protein atlas. It's just uh, been accepted. And so they know something about the appearance of proteins. You have the usual suspects, OK? So the, each, each line here is an accession number. So it's a gene-specific protein accession number in Swiss Prot. And then there's the CD number when it's known to be a CD molecule. 
And then, you know, these are usual suspects. So they're on all sorts of cells. They're really nonspecific. And so that's the chaff, and <clears throat> we need to get some wheat out of this. So here's some that are more specific to B and T cells and lots of lymphomas and leukemias. And most of these are cancer uh, cells at this point in this beginnings of the cell surface protein atlas. But, you know, this is now, now we're interested in these B cells, right? And the three we've run in a few months check out, you know, each of the CD markers that should be on each of these three known B cell cancers uh, are there, so check. Now, but I'm, we're interested in B cell fine mapping. So let's look at that portion of those markers, you know, maybe 20, 25 of these proteins. At least this is a subset, right? And so here's the three different B cell, sorry, eight different B cell subtypes. All think oncology, right? These are, these are not primary B cells. More on that in just a moment. But from those data, we were able to combine them and generate our first preliminary map. It's just like a phylogenetic map, right? And so these are like, like mob mobiles, and they can spin around, and you can get a sense of distance on this x-axis. And so the di maximum distance between the cell types is mapped here. And so all the ways you've thought of molecular phylogeny or building phylogenetic trees, that this, we're just borrowing that, that um, framework to produce these maps. And uh, so it's a preliminary effort. And we're not saying uh, this is indicative of what's happening in a healthy human being. So let's get to primary B cells. And let's do that. And so to do that, we need blood. Right? And so now we've got this lovely uh, uh, process now worked out in the past few months where we've got ourselves a nice half million dollar flow sorter, top of the line, uh, eight color flow sorter. And uh, what we can do is pro negatively select for B cells as a pool, that's a CD19 marker. And then we process them through the sorter thousands of times per second. You can now sort for certain markers, those subpools, right, in the, in the virtuous cycle of cellular cartography. And now, so each little blip here is a cell, right? And we're counting uh, those as we go and, and heading these subpools. And we want to do this preparatively. We want to do proteomics after this sorting. This is the pipeline that we've been able to set up. And we wouldn't have been able to do this without the funding of the Allen Foundation. It's just that simple. So, uh, Looking at all these subpools, we will now subject them to our assays. And let me first describe the histone assay. So we're going to be monitoring the epigenetics or the, epi, the chromatin state through the differentiation process, right? And every good chromatin biologist knows that that's a very changing program when you start from a, a stem cell in the, in the bone marrow and go down a lineage to generate all the different types of B cells and, in fact, the whole hematopoietic system. So histones are these proteins uh, that, uh, you know, form nucleosomes. There's four core histones. They form these little balls. And there's 200 bases or so of DNA wrapped around the balls. And there's 100 million balls. And that's how you get a two-meter long piece of DNA into a few micron uh, uh, diameter nucleus. OK, and on each of these nucleosomes are these sort of antenna. And they project a code the histone code. And you can have a strict interpretation of the code or a loose instruction or a loose interpretation of the, of the code. But um, we'll quibble about that maybe tomorrow. Uh, the states are position and state specific. Uh, the, so at this lysine, on this histone, you've got mono, di, and trimethylation. A tiny little methylation switch on this protein absolutely conveys information. And so what our assay does on just 30 or 50,000 cells, we can screen uh, 75 of these chemical states at over three dozen positions on all the core and linker histones. So that's what we're using to screen these pub subpopulations. And so we'll start with uh, CD34 uh, stem cells here. And we're immediately seeing what lots of people know in uh, differentiation of, um, of cell types. So here's the levels of. K27, a known repressive mark when you get to highly methylated states, di and trimethylated states. And you can see this big change in going from a stem cell to a naive B cell or a memory B cell. And so the colors represent the different known 
uh, pools, uh, and then these are biological replicates uh, from different donors. And then here I include uh, some of the gray colors are the, are the uh, uh, cancer cell, uh, cell types, so we've got those running as well. But the real goal here is to get to the healthy biology, just map out what's there in health. So um, the top-down part of this, so this is this philosophy of, of protein measurement that states simply have protein, weigh protein, <laughs> right? And when there's a tiny little variation, phosphorylation, methylation, um, maybe some allelic change in, the, in the, like a SNP in the protein that then changes modification patterns, all of that kind of variation at the protein level is scrambled when you digest and do bottom-up proteomics. That's the way that 99% of the labs do it. Um, because, of course, top-down proteomics is impossible. <laughs> and no, it's not. And so um, it, it's a simple idea, and it's growing each year. And bottom-up, you know, the more that I see uh, it progressing in either clinical application or basic biology, you know, it does give you this fragmented picture, and uh, you don't get the whole thing. So if each protein molecule is like a picture, you know, this is your view of the protein, and you're missing some key details. And so top-down gives you this key detail, like me, at, this is a 10-year-old picture of my research group, and that's the alma mater welcoming students to the University of Illinois. So now you have like a few thousand of those pictures to catalog, and you know, if you're gonna inventory the primary structure of protein molecules precisely, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the correct philosophy. So we've got data on the four uh, B cell cancer lines that we've run thus far. So this is quantitative top-down proteomics data, a few thousand uh, proteins. We call them proteiforms. And we can put those right into a proteiform repository and pump it into the public domain whenever uh, we get the green light. But you can browse then within each cell type, and this will, of course, mature with the project, the different types will be categorized and, and those cell surface markers declared um, for the world to peruse. And then in each cell type, you can drill down on the proteiforms uh, within those subtypes. And so here's just a small proteasome uh, complex member, small protein. Uh, and all of its modifications, uh, even as they occur in combination. And we were able to get that spun up really quickly because we uh, formed co-founded a consortium to try to say to the world with some increasing volume uh, that top-down can provide good measurement and good return on, me on that philosophy. And it's just not something that the field of, of protein mass spectrometry uh, likes to listen to or much less embrace. So that's the uh, view of the project, you know, half a year in. And um, the last thing I want to say is about the the value of the map and how to read it. You know, so that's of course debatable, and, uh, but the goal is to combine all those protein data types into a unified map, and then to make it as high resolution as possible. And then, um, if we do that right, it should reflect the underlying biology, right? The nodes, the cell types that we define, they should be representing major switch points in differentiation. And, as such, uh, knowing how to read those out, those nodes should be high value. And the world is set up to adopt this. It's cell surface markers uh, and flow cytometry or other readout methods. And so we use these 2D barcodes to define a, a, a validated quantitative assay for an, a, one of these uh, finalized nodes, cell types, on the map. So we've got a zip code or a barcode for each major point uh, along the lineage that we map out. So, uh, and the readout of that validated barcode, of course, flow cytometry does this. Uh, it's cousin Cytoff, but you have to develop antibodies, right? And you, you have to validate an assay, uh, et cetera, et cetera. There is another way of, of using proteomics that's not antibody-based, and we'll be developing that as well. So here's just Cytoff, and in the interest of time, I'll usher us toward the goal line here, and, um, you know, so if you know Cytoff, it is very lovely in its ability to read out a barcode 
with less overlap than with light and with, with cyt uh, flow cytometry. Uh, and then here's the proteomic way to do it, to read out uh, no known barcodes. And this leverages all of the recent activity in what's called targeted proteomics. And if there's any aficionados in the room, um, that's the MRM uh, kind of approach. So, uh, you know, uh, un unbiased mapping, you know, it's not been done even at this scale uh, so far. And uh, so it'll be interesting to see how far we get, how fast. And with the use of antibodies, you, know, you can get some really new insights, new cell surface proteins that really come on strong. And then you'll be able to do all the things that people are used to doing with CD markers. Um, and then, you know, these validated barcodes, I assert that there will be a high value for them if the map is done at high enough resolution to reflect the underlying biology. In, in us. And so if we domesticated plants 10,000 years ago, and now we want to domesticate cells for therapeutics, uh, uh, regenerative medicine, or other applications, um, uh, or using cells as therapeutics, we, we've really got to understand them much better and the proteins uh, within them to use in a deterministic way. So uh, thank you to uh, the foundation. This really would not be projected forward at anything like the rate. Uh, there's a huge positive energy around this in my lab at Northwestern. And, and uh, the Merkin group uh, gave us the flow cytometer, which was gracious. And so thanks for your attention. Uh-oh, Jeremy. Yeah, so, Neil, that's spectacular. And y my understanding is right. You're looking at, thank you, cell surface and intracellular proteins? Yes. And his stones. And his stones. So, the, so my question is, you said the, the gold was getting to the, the normal biology. The gold, I think, is getting back to cancer, of course. And if we do that, uh, and we think about diagnosis of lymphomas, of these dozens upon dozens of B-cell lymphomas, is A, not possible based on the amount of infrastructure it requires in the developing world, and even in the United States, telling one lymphoma apart from another by a non-hematopathologist it has actually a lot poor inter-observer variability. So do you envision potentially using a, a global proteomic approach to be able to say profile marginal zone lymphomas, Burkitt lymphomas, lymphoplasma, cytic lymphomas, large cells, et cetera, create a proteomic signature of each of these and then have a rapid way um, of actually matching a given proteomic profile of a tumor with a diagnosis, potentially giving a rapid turnaround that would transport Anywhere in the world. So let me. So yes, and we're, we have as part of the project of one type of multiple myeloma and one type of CLL, um, and and that's that's what we've got on tap. And those are specifically have specific mutational backgrounds. Um, so yes, I could envision a, a larger version of this, um, but that's what the barcodes are. The barcodes are to distill down all that signature business into something that's made exportable, and it's got value behind it, and now you're interested in the most efficient way to read it out. So I think there's, there's really a, a step of assay development, validation, verification, and deployment. And that deployment could be antibody-based. I mean, I, I'm really agnostic as to that deployment. And it's that, it's that Tico Brahe helocentric thing, right? I mean, if you really measure it well and you reflect the biology, that's the healthy part. And then, you, okay, you, the cancer cells will be interesting to see where they spun off the rails and, and at what stage of development. But, um, you know, we won't get too many looks at that in the next just two years, just, I think, resource-wise. 